Tiny House Guy, and I have a new video for you. And this has nothing to do with tiny houses. This has to do with a video that I did over the summer about a backseat delete from my Toyota Tacoma. I promised that I would produce some plans at some point, and I have done that. And I produced a 3D model and all kinds of goodies for you. And I'm going to go over those uh, with you here today in this video. So this is what it looks like. This is uh, you basically rip the back seats out of your Toyota Tacoma. You build this thing, and this replaces it, produces uh, three uh, storage cubbies, well, three bottom storage cubbies, and then a couple here in the back. Um, so let's just uh, spin around here. I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So you got three doors, uh, these two doors, this door, this door, are the same size, and the, this down in here, uh, this area in here, and down in here is where this, this here is where the jack goes. And this one over here is just the extra storage that uh, Toyota gives you from the factory. And then over in this section, you end up with, uh, this is where your feet go. When you, if you were sitting in the, the seats, you'd have a big storage area here on either side in the, in the footwell area. And there actually is a little bit of storage here over the tunnel as well. It's, you know, a couple inches tall. Um, so let me spin you back around. You see the back here. So you can see this is made out of, this is the back. This is the top or the, you know, the main floor. Uh, this is attached to this bottom piece with just these uh, these two brackets. These are just aluminum one-inch angle brackets that you bolt in there. Uh, and then the uh, these four holes here. Whoops, let me get my little drawing tool out. So these four holes here actually go into the stock. There's hole. There are actually holes that uh, attach the back seats. I uh, use those four original holes, so it's right into the frame. And then let's go into here. And then there's actually four holes, three holes down here. These three that uh, attach into the floors. This is where the, actually the seat mounting holes are. The one thing I'll warn you is on the plans, I did give you dimensions for this. So there's a, you know, there's a, a measurement line for these uh, and I measure it you know, from here to here. I tell you what the measurements are. They're okay, but I gotta tell you, it's possible from model year to model year, these locations may move. And if they do, your holes are gonna be off. So I would suggest uh, using the method that I used to, to create these holes in the first place which is to find some bolts that fit in the hole and you basically you'll uh you'll so if you got a bolt here so let's say this is a bolt right what you're going to do is you're going to chop it off right there and sharpen it down to a point so you'll end up with uh, something that kind of looks like this and these are the, th the threads here so like, like, like my drawing and so then you screw this into the truck and then you'll have this little point sticking up and so then when you put your board across it actually will create a sort of a dimple in the board so that's the board you'll you bang it down there with a hammer, and you create a nice little dimple there, and use that as the the way you pick up your uh, your points. It's much more accurate, uh, and I guarantee you it will work. Uh, and even then, you still got to be careful because, you know, it's possible to shift the board when you're doing this, and you know you do have to to pay attention when you do it. So it's not the simplest thing in the world, and there's not a lot of room for error because the screws that you're using don't have very large heads. Um, so that's that. And let's see. Ah, so right in here. So this well, actually, I'll show, go over something different when I show you the plans. Um, what else here? Well, that's kind of what that looks like. I'll just zoom in, and give you some beauty shots. Oh, how about underneath? So underneath, the way that those door normally those doors would um, just fall right through the holes here. But what I've done is I put some. These are just pieces of aluminum, and I just you screw them in here with some wood screws. You know, a couple of screws there, a couple of screws there like that and um, that's how the, the drawer stays down all right so that's that hey stop typing okay so let me show you the uh, the plans I'm gonna actually go oh this is something you need to know at least my disk is almost full I really gotta fix my disk thing it happens every video um, the way oh the way that this so the way that this and this are attached together I mean, you could just, you know, take and put some screws down through here and, you know, cover them over with Bondo, whatever. Uh, you're going to cover the heads over with bed liner anyway, or, you know, Bondo and that bed liner, so you're not going to see them. But a better way to do it is to use something called a pocket jig. So this is a pocket jig. Oops, let me go back here. Uh, this is a pocket jig. You can get these at, um, this is at a Home Depot kit that you can buy. It's not very much money. Let me see, what is it? It's... Uh, well, 44 bucks. It's a little expensive. You might find it cheaper on Amazon. There are probably kits that don't have quite as much stuff. Uh, so anyway, these are the pictures of it. And this is kind of what it looks like when you're you're drilling the hole. So you drill this little hole in at a very steep angle. It kind of looks like this. Uh, and you put you put this funky screw through here. 
and um, that's what attaches the, the pieces together. It's very, very secure. I, I think I did them like every four inches or so. So that's how you're going to hold that together. Uh, let's look at the... Do I have it? I don't have it, but you know what? I have it here. So this is the... Uh, so the PDF file, the plans that I'm producing uh, look like this. So this is uh, some beauty shots that I did. I sort of rendered this up, and my um, and Shaper has a, a beta version out that lets you uh, put textures on here. So I put like a cast iron texture. So you get some nice, beautiful pictures of it. Yay. Uh, then I give you some, uh, here are the, what the latches look like. Here's the bar stock that you might need. Uh, you can get this bar stock at, uh, this bar stock here. You can get at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or any building supply store. It's usually pretty cheap. Uh, it might be easier than getting it at Amazon for you. Depends on your what you're gonna do. This is something I didn't do. Uh, I kind of wish I had because, like I say, the 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 holes where you screw these boards into the truck, uh, they're pretty critical. You the head the head actually doesn't have this dimension of the head uh, compared to the you know the size of the bolt. If you're off by you know half the width or a quarter the width of the bolt. Uh, the head is actually going to, when you when you tighten it up, you're going to tend to crush the plywood. And it's not going to hold very well. So having a very large head there helps you out. So you can either use these fancy, you know, button head screws that have larger heads or maybe use washers. I didn't like the look of washers. I wanted mine to have just a, I wanted just a tiny little head sticking up there. And I probably should have gone with something like this, but I didn't. Um, that's just my, my experience. Your mileage may vary. So these are the plans. So you see what I've done is um, on each of these, I've this is the uh, dimensions for the cutouts, you can see. And then I've dimensioned each of the holes over here on this other one. So that's that. Uh, this is the back, similar kind of thing, dimension the holes, dimension the cutouts. This is the, uh, the top piece that goes on top of the, the back seat plate. Something I'll note here that you do want to know this and this can absolutely vary depending upon what options you have. So if you have a powered rear window, there's a, a cable that goes back there, uh, I think on this side. Uh, you may just just want to check, you know, cut this out to, you know, 54 by 2 inches, put it up there, and you might want to just, you know, uh, use a piece of cardboard, make a little template, because I think, uh, especially I think on this side, I think you might actually be able to, to make this slightly smaller, make it fit a little better around the, uh, the plastic that's back there. So just... Pay, pay attention to that and let's see there's that and then over here this absolutely this I guarantee you these measurements are not going to fit your truck uh, I left my rubber floor mats in because I wanted just a, a little tray down there to hold anything that might have spilled or whatever uh, so if you follow these dimensions you're probably going to end up with a gap you know sort of somewhere in here it'll be a little bigger than what you might want uh, you're probably not going to notice it because it's kind of tucked behind the seat you really can't see it anywhere but you probably want this to look to be you know nice and tight so stuff doesn't fall out of your your storage. So I would say definitely, um, you know, take a take the center line, make a piece of you know cardboard template, and then you know trace out this in your tunnel, hold it up here, and cut it up with a jigsaw, just you know the way you would uh, you know trace out anything with cardboard, just just for this one little section. Otherwise, these dimensions are are going to be fine. Is there anything else? Side thing this is similar in the side thing. This will absolutely work, but you could end up with a gap somewhere in here if you use this exact dimension, depending upon how your carpets are or whatnot. I would say, um, you know, cut this piece, cut this, you know, an extra, maybe an inch that way, and then, you know, scope it out with cardboard. Uh, you want to, probably what you're going to end up with is something that looks more like that. So it'll, it'll blend in a little nicer and it, it'll, you should on, on mine, there's actually no gap at all. Hardly. I mean, you, I could probably maybe stick a pencil somewhere right in here, but it, it's, the gaps are very small. So if you see, if you trace this out real well, uh, you will be able to do a, a really nice job with that. Uh, let's see. So that's the last one here. Is anything this, so these are the doors. Um, something about these doors, uh, you can see that these, the, the dimensions here have been, they're sort of smaller. This is normally seven by 24. When you put bed liner along the edges here, uh, the bed liner makes the door wider. And so depending upon how much bed liner you're going to spray on it, depends on, you know, what this overall size is going to be. So what I would do uh, personally, let me uh, just go back to the CAD model. Can I get back to the CAD model? Hmm. Well, I can find it here. How about shaper? There we go. So what I would do is I would... Um, I would sort of take this piece or I would take a piece of cardboard 
and you know, first of all, cut cut these out. Uh, the other thing you're gonna have to watch out for is these these radius, the radius areas here. You know, you can if this is off, you know, between these two, you can end up with a really ugly looking corner. So what you might do is cut the holes out of the bottom here. You know, so cut cut these out, uh, go into the dimensions, and then put a piece of cardboard under it, trace out on the cardboard, and then from there figure out how much you want to shrink the doors uh, for it to accommodate the bed liner, and you. Especially with the bed liner, you really don't want to mess this up because the doors aren't going to fit. And well, you can't really once you put bed liner on, it's really hard to trim. So you you want to um, I I think on mine I ended up using like I think eighty thousandths total or maybe a tenth of an inch or something. I made the, the door smaller and it was too much. There there wasn't there was a, there's too big of a gap in there. I really don't like it especially. But the doors do go on and off very very easily. So just you know this is one area you probably do want to pay attention to the fitting. Uh, and then another trick that I did, uh, and I'll actually post a picture of that this in the video, is if I, if you look at, so on mine, what I did was I took a piece of, of uh, let me zoom in a little bit so I can draw this better. So right there, we zoom in. So what I did was I took a piece of sort of rubber surgical tubing, and I put it on the end here. And you could do this with weather stripping or surgical tape, whatever. And I actually put staples right in here. So I sort of stapled a piece of rubber surgical tubing. And what that does is it provides sort of a cushion of, uh, it allows the, the, this doesn't rattle, I guess, when the truck's driving down the road. If you're on bumpy roads, uh, these do could potentially rattle if you don't have something in there to sort of create a, a, a spring, you know, compressive force against it to keep it from rattling. So you can use weather stripping, you use rubber hose like I used, or you could just do a much better job fitting these in the first place and make it so that it doesn't rattle just naturally. So whatever works for you. So I'll get rid of that. Uh, let me also go back. So this is the other cool thing I'm going to show you. Do I have this out? I do not have it out. So let's just open it. This is a, uh, yes, I know it's not. Don't be a pain in the ass. Open with preview. So this is a USDZ file. And let me open this up for you. This is an augmented reality file that actually comes, if you buy the plans, um, it comes as part of it. And you can actually put this on your iPhone. And I will actually insert a little clip of the video showing you uh, what this looks like on the phone. Or actually, I'll do it on an iPad. So this is uh, something that you can sort of, you ever seen the Ikea furniture store? You can go buy a piece of furniture and show it uh, in place in your room. Well, I've done the same thing with the set of plans. So this 3D model, you can sort of superimpose in the back of your uh, Tacoma. And that come, this comes as part of the, uh, the plans. will see that I've included a link uh, where you can go get the zip file uh, the zip file will contain well first of all the zip file will be this here which is 17 megs big it's not very big uh, it contains the PDF which has all the dimension plans and pictures and whatnot and you also get the uh, augmented reality file so you can use it on your phone uh, the service that I'm using hopefully they're good I, I've never used them before but it's a gumroad thing whatever uh, I click on the link, you'll get this. Um, it's zero. I have it listed for zero dollars, but you can put whatever you want in there. If you want to drop me a couple of bucks, you can do that, and it is very much appreciated. You can say buy this, takes your credit card number, give me your email address. That looks like it takes Apple Pay. That's kind of nice. And um, so, anyway, that's how you get it. Um, I guess that's all I got. So, uh, any questions, comments, please leave them in the show notes. I will respond to all of them. And I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.